Hey guys, this is Rob with uh, Black Label Miniatures. I just opened this Iden Versio character and I wanted to do a quick uh, video about her, about her skills, and do a compare and stare to the next closest commander unit cl to her cost. So uh, on the face of this, uh, you can see that Iden has access to two trainings uh, slots, a gear slot, and an armament slot, as well as the counterpart that she comes with. Uh, she costs 100 squad points. She has 6 health, 3 courage. She rolls a red defense die where she surges for hits. Her basic weapon is a E11 blaster, which does 1 to 3 and rolls 3 white dice, basically giving you about a 12.5% chance to hit a turn. Collectively, that's I believe that's like 37.5%, uh, give or take. Uh, she has this skill called Quick Thinking, where she gets an Aim Token and a Dodge Token. Uh, that's kind of crazy in, in it, within itself. Uh, not to mention that she can deploy as an operative unit. She comes up with this other crazy skill, Loadout, where she can swap out her upgrades for other upgrades of the same or cheaper cost, which could be a big deal depending on what you're going at, especially when it comes to her two armament weapons that she can equip with. Now, she, on top of that, she gets Marksman, where she can spend an aim token to improve an attack die. And Nimble. Now, if you don't know what Nimble does, Nimble says that when you spend a dodge token defending against an attack, you get another dodge token. That's nuts. So let's compare her to another unit, which is Krennic. He is the closest cost commander to her. Okay, so basically we're going to do, we're going to talk about what, what they have access to, as in um, their upgrades. Then we're going to talk about their abilities and their points based off, you know, I gave them points based off their unit values, their defensive skills, offensive skills, and a thing that I call cost versus damage. So, and then I'm going to be doing Iden first and then Krennic and going back and forth between the two of them. So access. Iden, she has, through training, access to Hunter. And if you don't know what Hunter does, Hunter gives you an aim token whenever you're attacking a wounded tripper unit. Combined with her quick thinking skills, that's you know, that, that's really good because she's getting two aim tokens a turn when she's sitting idle and shooting. Okay? That's that's really crazy. Now her weapon upgrade, or, or excuse me, loadout, when combined with her weapon upgrade, allows her to switch between her TL-50 blaster and her DLT rifle, which you can see here. Um, they're both the same cost, so with loadout, you will be able to just swap them whenever you want. The TL-50 repeater is insane. Now, the DLT-28 rifle is pretty similar, similar to other units that are snipers. So, when you're going up against, when you're deploying her and your opponent has, you know, a lot of sniper units or units that are probably going to be held in the back, it would be a good idea to switch to the rifle. Just saying. Okay? So back to this. Now, Krennic has access to improvised orders. Improvised orders basically allows you to draw two command tokens per turn and assign one of them, put the other one back. You know, so you, you get the choice of two units every turn instead of just one to activate. Uh, strict orders. You allow friendly units to remove stress tokens before rolling. Uh, if you don't, if you really need your stress removed and you don't want to chance it on a roll, I mean that that's a good option, right? Aggressive tactics uh, gives him, you know, um, aggressive tactics allows you to give surges to friendly units, which can be a good thing and can be a loss of points at the exact same time if you don't know how to use it or you don't pay attention to it. And a lot of that really depends on what units you take 
with the with the commander that has aggressive tactics attached to it because sometimes when you really want the uh, the surge it's not useful okay now onto their abilities as I said before Iden has the ability to deploy as an operative which is really big because her honestly her commander skills are rather lacking right she's not really built to be a commander she's built to be you know a, a solo unit out there kicking ass right now the ability to swap out upgrades via the loadout is really big also as i said because you can swap out a weapon for another or swap out an upgrade card for something that you think you might need based on what you see on the field now quick thinking an action for an aim and a dodge token simultaneously you know that I <laughs> that's hard to explain how good that is that that's just silly nuts okay now nimble when you spend a dodge token you gain a dodge token when you know when rolling against an attack marksman marksman basically like I said you get to spend a token to change a die result okay this you're basically upgrading and with her E11 blaster, that increases her her hit, her hit percentage from a 12.5% to a 25% chance to crit or hit, basically, per dice, right? Or, or per turn. Now, in actuality, Marksman gives you a 100% chance to roll a hit every turn. But the opportunity to improve a hit to a crit is insane. Now on her TL-50 blaster, or her, TL, excuse me, her TL-50 repeater rifle, she goes from a 37.5% chance to hit to a 50% chance to hit every turn, technically. And her crits go from 125 to 25%. Now remember, every time you roll your dice, if you roll, you know, with her TL-50 rifle, you're rolling five dice, and if you roll five hits you can pick one up up one of the die and turn it from a hit to a crit right now krennic he has cunning uh that allows you to break ties on command cards so when you flip your command cards if you both ro flip a pip one you know it gives you the priority for the turn which can be a big deal he also has entourage uh that with dead troopers basically allows you to take an extra special forces unit so, you know, if you are just really into Death Troopers and you want to field four of them instead of three, you know, slap Krennic in as your commander and go to town with it. Uh, those guys are nuts. I've seen them wipe out squads of rebels with impunity, basically. You know, once they get in close and they can start rolling two dice instead of one, they are the nuts. Sharpshooter. Uh, Sharpshooter reduces your cover by one, which is great. So, as I said, on the commander scale, you know, which is what these both of these basically are, obviously Krennic sounds a little bit better than Iden, right? So, let, let's look at a couple of other things. So, I, do, I set up this points based off of basic unit values. So, the points are based off which skill is better, and if they're even, it's a tie, and neither one receives any points, okay? So... We're going to look at their their speed, their defense die, their health, their courage, their ability to surge, their weapons range, the attack die, and their attack modifications. Right. So for Iden, she has a speed two, and so does Krennic. So that's a tie. There's no points. For defense, Iden rolls a white, whereas Krennic rolls a red. Reds are better than whites, so Krennic gets one point. Health, Iden has six, whereas Krennic only has five. Iden's one point. Courage, they both have three courage. That's a tie, no points. Now, surges to hit. Uh, surges for Iden, I gave her a point because she has a surge. It allows her to surge to hit, right? So now she has two points, but Krennic... Krennic can surge to hit and surge to defend at the same time. So he gets two points. Now on the weapons range, 
the EL the E11 blaster is a range three, right? So that's one point because it's better than Krennic's base DT29 blaster, which only has a range of two. But Iden also gets another point for her TL50 repeater with a range three. So she has access to two different weapons that are at least range three. And she, in actuality, she has access to three weapons that are range two or better, right? So let's keep moving. So the attack die, uh, Iden's basic attack die are three white dice. Um, each die basically has a 12.5% chance to hit. Uh, that's a cumulative of 37.5% chance, but technically it's still 12.5% chance to hit when you when you really look at it. Uh, Krennic has a red, a red die, a white die, and a black die. Uh, cumulatively, cumulatively, he has a 37.5% chance to hit 12.5% to crit or search. So he gets a point there. Now, attack modifications, excluding surges. Iden has three ways to do attack modifications between her ability to gain tokens and spin them. Whereas Krennic has no, nothing outside of surges, so he gets no points. So Iden gets five points, whereas Krennic gets, only gets four points. And like I said, that's just based off of what I think their units values are worth when you're trying to figure out who you want to field. Now defensive, defensive, right? So you have to remember that technically when you're rolling a defense die, you have a 16.67% to roll a, a blank, a dodge, or a surge. Okay, that's basic. There's six sides, divide it up. Iden has a 50% chance to block without surges, okay? Her quick thinking, which provides her with dodge tokens, technically improves her dodge or her defensive ability to a 66.6% .6 chance to block per turn, which is huge, right? Now, Krennic only has a 16.6 .6 chance to block, and his surge ability, but his surge ability does increase this to 32 Point, or excuse me, 33.2% chance, which is still pretty good, right? It's not that bad. But I would take a red defense die over a white defense die any day of the week. Moving on to offensive. Now, uh, the attack die are eight-sided, right? So technically you have a 12.5% chance to miss, hit, crit, or surge per die. Now, remember that Marksman allows you to improve or upgrade a die result, thus technically improving your percentage to roll a hit or a crit per turn. So keep that in mind. As I said before, the E11 Blaster has a 12.5% chance for a, a hit, a crit, or a surge. Technically, Marksman improves hit, her hit and her crit to 25%. And that's on her E11 blaster. Now, if you take her T1150 repeater, whose basic is 37.5% to hit and a 12.5% to crit or surge, Marksman improves her basic hit up to 50% and her chance to critical up to 25%. So the, the way I'm looking at that basically is Marksman technically adds a die result. Right, so instead of only having five chances to hit with the white dice, technically you have six chances to hit because you can turn a blank into a hit. Okay, it's a little sciency in my head, but I may be right, I might be wrong. This is just the way I'm looking at things. Now, Krennic, Krennic has a DT29 blaster. His basic hit opportunity is 37 and a half, whereas his crit and his surge are 12 and a half. He has no ways really to modify his hit results in the way that Aiden does, right? Yeah, he can take a you know an aim token and reroll two dice, but 
that that opportunity to change a like I said, change a blank to a hit or a hit to a crit, as opposed to picking up two blanks and praying you roll a hit, crit, or surge are insane. Especially when it comes to white dice. Okay? Remember, <laughs> there I I there is one hit marker on a white dice, guys. The thing's eight-sided. It's horrible. Now we're gonna go into this thing that I created, or that I came up with, I call it, you know, cost versus damage, right? Uh, what's the cost of the unit versus the damage you're doing, okay? And I came up with two different uh, qualif qualifiers. One's an opportunity cost. What are you paying for a chance to do damage? Cost versus your average roll. And your activation cost. What are you paying to move and shoot per turn, which is your cost divided by your total range? Okay, uh, Aiden, her basic, I gave her for her opportunity cost, right? So what I did here was I took her dice on her basic weapon and I did the same thing for her TL-50 and the same thing for her, or excuse me, for Krennic. And I rolled the dice 10 times and I averaged, I added it up, averaged it out. Now for her three white dice, I averaged 1.1 points of damage per turn. Which, with the opportunity cost, like I said, cost versus average rolling, that gives you 90 squad points of total, that, that's total squad points per damage, right? Per turn. You're, so, with just her basic weapon, you're paying an average of 90 points a turn just to get her to roll her weapon, okay? Uh, that's... Technically, that, that's actually really bad. <laughs> that, that's a horrible cost, okay? Now I want to look at uh, what I call the activation cost of a unit, right? And that's where I take their ability to move and shoot. The, the range that they can move and shoot per turn. So Aiden has a range 3 and she can move 2. So that gives her 5 points per turn. And at 100... Point, at 100 squad points, that gives her a squad points of 20 per turn, right? So basically, you're using 20 squad points per turn to move her from one spot to another and then shoot. Now, as a percentage to hit versus cost, what this is, is I took her, their, their squad cost and their percentage of chance to hit, okay? And that gives her a 2.66 hit versus cost. Now, I, I I haven't quite figured out what this means yet. It, it's just something I was trying to figure out last night. It could mean a big thing. It could mean nothing. I could be blowing smoke out of something, right? <laughs> but I figured it's, it's 2.66 cost versus chance to hit per turn, you know, of her, like I said, of her squad points versus her ability to hit. And that's with her basic weapon. Now with her TL50 repeater, her opportunity cost, again, 10 rolls with five dice, two whites, two reds, and a black. Her average was 3.3 points of damage a turn. That dropped her squad points from 90 to 35 squad points a turn. That is a huge jump. Remember, you, you want lower, right? The more points you do per turn per squad, is obviously better than the less points you do per turn per squad, okay? So I'm figuring she does about three and a half or 3.3 points of damage a turn. And if you take that and you divide it by her, her cost of 115, right? Your opportunity cost is really low because you're getting a fair amount of damage per turn. Now her activation cost per unit changes, it actually goes reverse, it goes up because she, obviously she's more expensive and she's not shooting any further with the TL-50. And so her squad points go up to 23 per turn, right? Uh, not, a, not a big jump, but her percentage to hit versus cost actually goes down because her percentage to hit skyrockets with the TL-50 rifle, right? It basically... It, it, what did I say? It goes up to 37.5% from 12.5% to 37.5%, okay? That's 
two die results that you're adding to her ability to roll every turn. Base is her basic weapon. So I, I don't... <laughs> Like I said, this I, this I could be off on this. I could be right. I don't know. I haven't heard anybody else talk about it. So now Krennic, uh, his opportunity cost of unit is two points of damage a turn, which gives him a squad point value of about forty-five, which is just a little bit worse than Iden with her TL fifty rifle, but a hell of a lot better with Iden with her basic rifle, right? Her E11 blaster. His activation cost. Now his activation cost is actually higher than hers because his move and shoot is lower because he only shoots two per turn. And so that gives him a 22 and a half points cost. Also his percentage to hit versus cost is 1.4%. And that's because he is actually 25 points cheaper than her best output. Right, And even when he's only 10 points cheaper, his ability to hit is still higher than her ability to hit. So that's just looking at their, like I said, commander to commander, you know, Krennic honestly is the better commander out of these two units. But I'm curious what item will look like when we compare her to other op units in the field. And... The only one that I know that's really close to her, or that's actually right on the target, with, if you take her TL-50 rifle, is Bosk. And we all know that Bosk is a beast when he's on the field, okay? There's no, there's no joking about that. That dude does damage like nobody's business. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, this is the first time I've done something like this. So I was just trying to come up with something different, you know, and I wanted to see what you're really paying for what you're getting when it comes to these units. Um, have a great day. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.